Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson. Uh, this one I'm going to show you how to make wall types programmatically. I've created a new project here, right? I got nothing loaded in. Uh, my first wall, if I go to it, right? It's just a typical number wall. Show you how it works. Well, let me show you that we have a wall loaded in. Okay, so just simple wall, basic wall, right? And it's wall one. Okay, and then if we go to the edit type. Right, we see the structure and width is eight inches, and then right, structure is just eight inches, right? Nothing else here. Okay. So let's get out of this and then show you the button. Alright, if I go to my test tab and hit the button. Alright, and there's our new wall. Alright, this one is different than the original wall, so it's a new basic wall. It's a basic wall, it's a new wall, right? And then if we go into it. We can see width is a little different, that's great. And then structure, right? So in this one we have a finish layer on the exterior side, membrane, substrate, structure, membrane, finish, right? Just like a typical wall, okay? Uh, structure's gonna be eight inches, right? And we have two inches and five eighths inches, right? And then material is uh, just by category pretty basic, right? Okay, uh, let's get started and I'll show you how to make one. Hey guys, really quickly, the uh, reason I'm showing you this, guys, is because, uh, you know, uh, it's, again, you know, back to the boilerplate, you know, projects when you start out, whether you're in college or not, you know, kind of, it's always seems to be very repetitive having to create uh, new walls every time, right, and laying them out and, you know, then editing them and stuff like that. So uh, this tool is meant to help you, uh, you know, instead of having to make 10 walls on a project, you just hit a button and then you know, your 10 walls loaded in, right? Uh, probably save you maybe about an hour worth of time, maybe, depending on how many walls you're making. If you're making 20 walls, right, and you're on a big project or 30 walls or whatever, then obviously, you know, that goes into a huge time-saving bucket, right? And if you have multiple members on your team, well, then that just saves you a lot more hours. And if you do this project over years and years and years and years, or if you create, sorry, if you create multiple projects over years and years and years and years, well, then that saves you a ton more time there. Guys, the whole point of this is so that you can automate the simple things and then you'll have time for the harder things. Alright guys, uh, let's get started on the tutorial. Alright guys, so, create a new project, right? Mine is just named uh, Create Wall Type Tutorial. Okay, let's go into App. And then we can change our names. Control and button there. And this guy here. Right, and this one we can add spaces too if we want. <clears throat> and then let's get ready to bring in presentation code for the bitmap. Okay. And then let's go over to command.cs. Or sorry, let's go to the add-in. And I guess I'm gonna come over here and then we're gonna comment out uh, our command right here. So we only have the application. Alright, come down, come down, come down. Alright, great. And then we're gonna come over to command.cs. Alright guys, now we're back in command.cs, right? So now we're gonna bring in uh we're gonna lay out our code. Pseudocode case, okay, so this one's gonna be first. Um, we're going to uh, grab all levels so that we can place a wall on it. And then we're going to grab all levels. We're going to grab all walls so we can duplicate one of them. And then we're going to grab the first wall. In collection, and then we're going to grab all wall types. And then we're going to grab the first one in the selection again.
and then we're going to set a new wall type to null so we can use it later All right, and then we're inside the transaction. Uh, before I forget, we're gonna come back up and we're gonna grab the first level in the level collection. Okay, and then we're down inside the transaction. So now what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna duplicate a wall. We're gonna duplicate the wall type. And then we're going to grab the material of that wall, the original wall. Okay. And then we're going to set some dimensions, right? And this one's just going to be like we're going to set inches uh, so that Revit knows how to translate that. You know, so we can set like the thicknesses of uh, insulation or a jip or what have you. Okay. And then after that, we're going to set our wall structure. And it's gonna go interiors at, or sorry exteriors at the top, and then it's gonna be middle for the core, which I'll explain later, and then the interior, right? Okay, once we do that, then we're going to grab the wall compound structure. Okay. And then we're going to add all of our layers that we just created into um, our wall compound structure. Okay, and then after that, then we're going to set the compound structure so we're going to set this compound structure layers and then we're going to show our interior and exterior shell layers we're going to do that with just a debug debug.print And then finally, uh, we're going to set the structure. Okay. So there's a difference between the setting the layers and setting the structure, right? Okay. Uh, and then after that, then we're going to place the wall. Right. Okay. Just so that it's clear where we're separating it. All right, and that one's we're just gonna um, <clears throat> we're gonna get the location for the line that we're drawing. Those are just points, and then we're gonna create line. And then we're gonna set the height of the wall, and then we're gonna set the offset in case there is one. We're also going to come up here and we're going to set the level that I wanted to place on. Okay. All right. And then oops, set level as first level. Okay. And then we're going to come down here and then we're finally going to place the wall. All right. And that'll be it. Uh, let's go back to the top and we'll start coding it out. All right, guys. So we're back at the top right. We're going to do, uh, we're going to use our filtered element collectors to grab everything. So it's filtered. Oops. Element collector. I'm going to call this one call levels. It's going to be equal to the filtered element collector of the dog. Where element is not element type. Dot of category. 
built-in category invalid, and then dot of class type of level. All right, and now we're going to grab the first level, and that's going to be just level level is equal to coal levels dot first element as level and that needs to be a capital level okay cool now we're going to grab all walls right and that one's going to be we can just copy this paste that and then this was in column coal walls type of wall. All right. And then we're going to grab the first wall. And now I'm just going to be wall, wall is equal to coal levels. Oops. Coal walls dot first element as wall, okay, and then we're going to grab all wall types, right, and for the wall types, it's going to be similar, so we're just going to grab this, copy it, come down here, paste, and then we're going to call this one wall types, and then it's going to be a wall type, and then Looks like we get to comment where is not element type out. Is an element type. Okay. Now we're gonna grab the first wall type in the collection and just gonna be wall type. Wall type is equal to core wall types. Dot first element as wall type. And this one we're actually going to change the name to first wall type. Okay. Alright, and then we're going to set a new wall type to null so we have so we're able to grab it later. And that's going to be wall type. New wall type is equal to null. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, that's going to be it for part one. Uh, go ahead and check out part two, and uh, don't forget to like, like and subscribe. Alright, see you guys soon.